we're going to learn about how to solve Atwood machine problems. So this is an Atwood's machine. There are two masses. This is a straight up Atwood machine. Um, there are two masses that are attached to a string and it goes over a pulley. Um, for right now, we're going to assume the pulley is frictionless and massless. And so effectively, all the string, all the pulley is doing is changing the direction of the tension force. It's not changing the magnitude of the tension force. We also have modified Atwood machines, so we could have something like this as an object on a table, and then uh, maybe something on an inclined plane. There's lots of different options here. So the two assumptions we're going to make are that the tension in the rope is the same all the way through the rope, and that the pulleys are massless and frictionless. There are two methods for solving Atwood machine problems, and you can use either of the two methods. It doesn't matter to me but I wanted to show you two ways to solve them. So the first one is using two different systems. The first thing you're gonna do is designate a positive direction. The direction of travel often works best. And then you're gonna draw force diagrams or free body diagrams for each of the masses. Then you'll write net force equations and then we solve for unknowns. Some tips here, often adding the equations together will make the force of tension values cancel out and you can solve for acceleration. That's a algebra tool that you can use. You can also use substitution or whatever you're comfortable with. Be really careful with your signs and I'll talk more about that when you do a problem. Then there's, so let's, um, let's do method one first and then we'll talk about method two. So here's my situation. I have mass one is 12 kilograms and mass two is eight kilograms. I need to find the acceleration and the force of tension. So the first thing I'm going to do is establish a positive direction and just like, you know, I've told you that you're very powerful and you can choose the positive direction. With Atwood's machine problems, we are actually going to curve the positive direction. My goodness, my pen is way too thick. <laughs> so um, let's change the thickness of this. And maybe let's go back to pen. Okay, so we change the, we actually curve the positive direction. So down is going to be positive for M1 and up is going to be positive for M2. And then we're going to draw force diagrams. So we'll draw a force diagram for M1. And I think my thickness changed again. Um, so M1, we have the force of gravity acting down. And we'll just put the force of gravity on one, and then the force of tension acting up. And the force of tension is smaller than the force of gravity because M1 is going to accelerate downward. And then for M2, we have the force of tension acting up, and then the force of gravity acting down, and the force of gravity of two needs to be smaller than the force of tension because it's accelerating upward. Now, I always put a positive sign here and a positive sign here to remind me what directions are positive for when I write my net force equations. So the next step is to write net force equations. So we're going to write a net force equation for M1 and a net force equation for M2. So sum of the forces on one is equal to. Now when we solve Atwood machine problems, we're not going to write these as vectors. We're going to write them as scalars. So we're bending the positive direction and it just makes it a little more complicated if you do it with scalar or vectors. So for M1, we're going to have force of gravity acting in the positive direction and then we subtract the force of tension because it's acting in the negative direction. And then some of the forces for mass two, we get the force of tension, which is positive, minus the force of gravity on two. And then we're gonna expand each of these to MA. So this is mass one times acceleration equals mass two times gravitational field strength minus force of tension. And over here we have mass two times acceleration equals force of tension minus mass two times gravitational field strength. Now from here, we simply have a system of equations. We have acceleration and force of tension as our unknowns. We know both masses. Goodness, I put mass two there instead of mass one. Don't know where my brain goes sometimes. Okay, so like I said, we have a system of equations. Um, we know the masses and we know gravitational field strengths, so tension and acceleration are the only un 
um, the two unknowns, and we have two equations so we can solve. Now, like I said before, in the tips, it is very, it always works out nicely to add these two together. And when we add them together, you'll notice there's a negative force of tension here and a positive force of tension there. So those will go away and then we can easily solve for acceleration. So on the left side, we have mass one times acceleration plus mass two times acceleration equals mass one times gravitational field strength minus force of tension plus force of tension minus mass two times gravitational field strength. Now my forces of tension cancel, which is very nice, and I can solve for acceleration. I'm gonna pull acceleration out, so I have acceleration equals mass one plus, sorry, my acceleration times mass one plus mass two equals, and I can pull G out to um, mass one minus mass two times gravitational field strength. And then I'm gonna isolate A, so we get A is equal to mass one minus mass two times gravitational field strength over mass one plus mass two. And I can plug in numbers here. So we get 12 kilograms oops, plus eight kilograms times 9.8 newtons per kilogram divided by mass one plus mass two. Goodness, I'm making all kinds of mistakes this morning. <laughs> that should be 12 minus eight. And then this is 12 plus eight. Those are kilograms. And then when we calculate that, we should find that we get, um, if I run I'm kind of rounding a little bit, but we get about two meters per second squared as our acceleration. Now to solve for tension, all we have to do is plug this into one of these two equations. I usually choose the one where force of tension is already positive. So mass two times acceleration equals force of tension times mass two times gravitational field strength. So mass two times acceleration equals force of tension minus mass two times gravitational field strength. We isolate force of tension by adding mass two times gravitational field strength to the other side. And then we, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the mass two. And we get mass two, which was eight kilograms times acceleration, which is two meters per second squared, plus G which is, um, I'm just gonna use 10 meters per second squared for ease of math, um, mental math, so that, so we get 96 newtons as our force of tension. And that's how you do that problem. Now, one thing to help you double check yourself, the force of tension for a straight up Atwood machine should always be between the weights of the two masses. So mass one is um, 12 times 10 newtons, newtons per kilogram, 9.8, we're just rounding to 10 for easy mental math, so that's 120, and then this would be 80. So 96 is right in between those, so that's perfect. Then, um, we're gonna do this with our second method. So let's look at the second method. The second method is to use one system. So first you're gonna designate a positive direction, just like before. Travel, direction of travel, travel often works best. You're gonna include both masses in the system and draw a force diagram. Write a net force equation, solve for unknowns. Some tips here, force of tension will not be in your net force equation because you're putting both masses in the same system. So the tension force is an internal force, so it does not go on the force diagram. Only external forces go on the force diagram. You need to be really careful with your signs. And then to solve for force of tension, you're gonna have to write a net force equation for just one of the masses so that you have an equation with force of tension in it. All right, so let's try this problem again, but now let's use method two. So for method two, we are going to choose a positive direction. So I'm going to choose direction of motion again. That's positive. So that's positive. And I'm going to, often what I'll do is redraw it. So basically what this 
pulley is doing is simply bending the the rope so you're curving the positive direction so if you were to just stretch that out you would get this with this being mass one and this being mass two so if you put all of this in your system both of these masses are in your system then you have the force of gravity of one acting this way and then the force of gravity two opposing that so acting in the opposite direction and that's a smaller force for the force of gravity of two so you have this force diagram which is a little slanted um but you have this force diagram and this shows you the this is it's kind of weird looking because it's the um because we have taken the pulley and we basically straightened it out right but it still uh is going to work out conceptually and mathematically because what you've got here is a system where you have the force of gravity on one acting the opposite direction of the force of gravity on two which is exactly what you have going on in this in this situation okay so now we write a net force equation and we only have one net force equation so net force equals force of gravity one and once again we're not going to use vectors for atwood's machine problems um, minus force of gravity two and then we write our, our net force is equal to ma but this time our ma is mass one plus mass two because they're both in the system times acceleration equals mass one times gravitational field strength minus mass two times gravitational field strength and then we can isolate acceleration so we get acceleration equals i'm going to pull out the g so we get mass one minus mass two times g over mass one plus mass two now you should be like hey that looks familiar because if you look back to our other method we got the same equation for acceleration right here so both methods will give you the same equation and the same result uh, let's go ahead and plug in numbers even though we've already done it so we get 12 kilograms minus 8 kilograms times 10 newtons per kilogram I'm just rounding to 10 for easy mental math over 12 kilograms plus 8 kilograms and then that gives you an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. Because you have 40 over 20. All right, so there's your acceleration. And then for force of tension, we're going to need to draw a force diagram for just one of the masses. So I'm going to choose mass 2 because force of tension is positive. So I'll do less moving around in my equation. And so for mass two, we have force of tension acting up. Apparently it's really hard for me to draw straight arrows <laughs> on this thing. Okay, force of gravity acting down. And then we write our net force equation. Force of tension minus force of gravity two. And then replace net force with mass times acceleration and replace force of gravity with mass times gravitational field strength and we isolate force of tension and we get mass times acceleration plus mass times gravitational field strength and these are all mass twos and then i'm gonna pull out the mass two and you should notice that this is the same equation that we got for force of tension using the other method so we can do eight kilograms times 2 meters per second squared plus 10 meters per second squared and that gives us 96 newtons oops we're at my equal sign 96 newtons okay so that's just a typical atwood machine problem let's do it again but let's use this situation which is a modified atwood machine um, Let's do it with both methods. So we can do the first method first, and then we'll do 
the two second. Um, so here we have a modified Atwood machine. There's a mass here of 10 kilograms, and then it, the string goes over the pulley, and you have a mass here of 5 kilograms. So we need to find the acceleration and the force of tension, first when it's frictionless, and then when the coefficient of friction is 0.2. So we're going to go like this as our positive direction, and we're going to draw, um, we'll call this mass 1. Actually, let's just do this. For the rectangle, we have our forces, which is force of gravity on the rectangle. I'll just put an R for rectangle. And then force normal. And then we have force of tension. And at first, it's frictionless. And then for the triangle, we have the force of gravity. on the triangle and the force of tension acting out. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Okay, so um, we've chosen down as positive for the triangle and to the right as positive for the rectangle. So now we write net force equations. So some of the forces on the rectangle is just equal to the force of tension. And some of the forces on the triangle is equal to force of gravity on the triangle minus force of tension. And this is mass of rectangle times acceleration equals force of tension. And this is mass of triangle times acceleration equals mass of triangle times gravitational field strength minus force of tension. Now we get to here, and we have two equations and two variables, acceleration and force of tension. So we can use any algebraic uh, methods to solve this. You could easily do substitution here because you only have one term. However, I'm still going to add them because it keeps the accelerations on the same side of the equation, which I think makes it easier for rearranging. So we get mass of rectangle times acceleration plus mass of triangle times acceleration equals mass of triangle times gravitational field strength. Oops, I forgot the plus. That's okay. Plus force of tension minus force of tension. Uh, I did those a little out of order, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so those go away. And then we solve for acceleration by pulling it out. Mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle equals mass of triangle times gravitational field strength. And then we solve for acceleration mass of triangle times gravitational field strength over mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle. So there's our equation. I'm not going to plug in the numbers and solve because uh, that's really where the physics ends, right? There's not, um, there's not, the rest of it is just algebra. I will tell you that the acceleration is equal to 3.3 meters per second squared. So you can do that calculation if you want. All right, now let's try it with friction. And now when we do it with friction, it's a little bit different. So we have the rectangle here, and we draw our force diagram. So we have force of gravity, and we have the normal force. And the block is not accelerating up and down, so you know that these are equal in magnitude. Then you have your force of tension, and you have a frictional force. On the triangle, it's the same force diagram because the friction doesn't affect the triangle. So you have force of gravity on the triangle, and you have the tension force. And this is force of gravity on the rectangle. So now when I write my net force equations, I have some of the forces on the rectangle equal force of tension minus force of friction. And some of the forces on the uh, triangle equal force of gravity on the triangle minus force of tension. And remember, this is positive, down is positive for the triangle, and to the right is positive for the rectangle. So this becomes mass of rectangle times acceleration equals force of tension 
minus force of friction, and force of friction is mu times the normal force. Now we have to pause for a second because we need something to plug in for the normal force. So we should see that for um, net force in the y direction is equal to zero uh, because it's not accelerating. So we can say that the magnitude of the normal force is equal to the magnitude of the force of gravity on the rectangle. So we can plug that in there. And we get mass of rectangle times acceleration equals force of tension minus mu times mass of rectangle times g. Then over here we have mass times of triangle times acceleration equals mass of triangle times gravitational field strength minus force of tension. So now I can add these two together to solve for acceleration. So I get mass of rectangle times acceleration plus mass of triangle times acceleration equals force of tension minus mu times mass of rectangle times g plus mass of triangle times g minus force of tension. Forces of tension cancel out and we isolate A. So I'm going to have A times mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle equals We'll pull g out for fun, mu times mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle times g, and then we get acceleration equals mu times mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle times g over mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle. Um, and then I'm not going to do the math for that, but uh, you can try it out and we find that acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. That's the answer. Um, and then also force of tension, remember that you would plug in your, your acceleration to one of these equations up here to solve for force of tension, and you should get force of tension equals 20 newtons. I forgot to put that up here for the no friction. On this one, our force of tension equals 33 newtons. All right, so there's method one. Now let's do method two. So method two, we treat everything as one system. So um, sometimes this is a little tricky to, to think about. I think it's trickier when it's like this for some reason, as opposed to just hanging over the pulley like the first example. Okay, so we're going to start by drawing our force diagram. Um, and when we've got friction on the surface, I'm going to, oh, there's no friction, sorry, no friction on the surface. So um, I'm going to actually neglect the force of gravity and the normal force for right now. I'm just going to worry about the forces that affect motion. So in this case, all we have is the force of gravity on the triangle. We also have the normal force and the gravitational force on the rectangle, but they're not going to affect motion. and They're not going to be in the net force equation, so I'm just going to leave them off for right now. So then we write our net force equation. Sum of the forces is equal to the force of gravity on the triangle. And that's the only one. And then net force is equal to mass times acceleration, but we have both masses, mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle times acceleration equals mass of triangle times gravitational field strength. We isolate acceleration and we get mass of triangle times gravitational field strength over mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle. And you'll notice that that is the same equation that we got over here for our method one. So we would just plug in numbers there to solve and we'd get the same, the same result, right? And then to solve for, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, that's right. And then to solve for acceleration, we would draw a force diagram for one of the objects and solve for force of tension there by plugging in our acceleration. So maybe I draw a force diagram for the rectangle where I would have force of gravity on the rectangle, normal force on the rectangle, and then force of tension. So then I could just do net force on the rectangle is just the force of tension. 
and then I could plug in my acceleration there to solve for that mass of rectangle times acceleration equals force of tension and then I could solve there okay now let's do it with friction so with friction so now it gets a little bit more complicated uh, I'm going to think about it here as one system again and I don't think I did this on the upper part but that's positive and I draw my force diagram so I have my force of gravity on the triangle and then I have my frictional force opposing that so I do some of the forces equals force of gravity on the triangle minus the frictional force and the frictional force is acting on the rectangle so we have to be careful about that now our net force is the whole system's mass so that's massive rectangle plus massive triangle times acceleration equals force of gravity on the triangle so that's mass of the triangle times acceleration oh goodness times g uh, and then you subtract the force of friction i'm going to just gonna start going over <laughs> mass of triangle times g and then we subtract the force of friction which is mu times the normal force on the rectangle so here is where we have to pause and think about the forces on the rectangle in the y direction so you have force of gravity and the normal force and since the net force in the y direction is equal to zero we know that normal force is equal to force of gravity those are the only two forces one up and one down so we can use that to plug in right there and then we get i'm going to go ahead and divide that over so we get acceleration equals mass of triangle times gravitational field strength minus mu times mass of rectangle times g all over mass of rectangle plus mass of triangle and you should see that that is the same equation that we got over here Voila. Uh, we, this is not right because this is supposed to be negative. Whoops. Because that was subtracting. I just lost that negative sign right there. So it should be the difference in those two. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. What was that tip? What was this tip up here? Oh, be really careful with your signs. <laughs> At least I got my mistake. Okay, so then um, that's our equation for acceleration. And then once again, to find tension, you could draw a force diagram for one of these and then plug in your acceleration.